I love being on finance TikTok, but one of the most depressing things about it are the DMs that I get from a lot of followers who are in their late 40s, 50s, and 60s and are just at that point in life thinking about retirement and how they can afford to plan for it. The other day, a elementary school friend of mine called. This is someone I haven't seen since fifth grade. And he said like, hey, you're a stock guy, right? Uh, would you talk to my mom? And I was like, well, I'm not like, I'm not like a financial advisor, so I can't. And he was like, just talk to her, please. So I get on this phone with my friend's mom, who I haven't seen since like, you know, 1995. <laughs> and um, we started talking about she's late 60s, tired, her hips hurt, her knees hurt, she needs knee surgery. Um, uh, you know, and she's just tired. She's just tired of working for someone else and is wondering like, all right, it's time to start planning for retirement. And the fact that like she's waited for so long was, you know, I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news and I hate to be the person who goes like, you know, retirement might not be something you get to do. So we started talking about money and finance and stuff. And she just purchased a house, first time homeowner in her late 60s. And we get over to some of the numbers and it turns out that she's paying considerably more for her mortgage than she ever was for rent, which included all utilities. Like her mortgage doesn't include the utilities. So she's really spending a lot of money every month. And she was like, but everyone says that a home is a great investment. And I'm like, yeah, but you're 60, like, I think 67 or something like that. Like, you're going to die before you pay off your mortgage. You know, like the idea is you buy a house when you're in your 20s or 30s. And by the time you're retired, the home is paid off. So you, you can live a little bit more comfortably on the money you've invested in. So speaking of your investments, what have you got? And she was like, zero no investments. So I, I, you know, I hate to be that guy. That's why on TikTok, I try to gear my videos towards people. I'm 37. I try to gear my videos to people who are in their early 20s. As we're going to go over in this video, and you're going to see on the charts behind me, you need a lot less when you have more time. And you need a lot more when you have less time. Not only that, you're working against a shorter time frame in the market and things can happen, right? Market volatility is around all the time. And it's a concern, uh, you know, if you're in your 60s and you've just started investing, there could be a recession, there could be a war, there could be a, a, a global pandemic, like what we've seen that no one could have predicted. One of these sorts of events that happen that no one predicts, and let's say that's when you start investing. So for the first time in your life as a 60 something year old, you're investing and you're way down. I mean, you're down considerably 20, 30, 40% on some things. If you have stock in Tesla, you're down 60%. When you're 20, you have more time, even 30 or 40, you have more time on your side for markets to recover. Plus, hopefully your dollar cost averaging, hopefully you're putting more money in every month. So you're buying at lower rates. Uh, or at lower prices, and you're able to build and build and build. And then when you hit 60, you hopefully have millions, or at least a million that you can live off of in retirement. And you know, the reality is these numbers don't include future inflation. So that million might go a little less far than we hope it does. But even still, when I do these videos, people always say, well, you know, uh, with inflation, it's going to be less. That 1.4 million will really be like 800,000. Like, and they poo poo it. And it's like, bro, that's still 800,000 that you didn't have. You're going to be grateful when you're in your 60s that you have it. So you might not even be able to fully retire, depending on inflation and how you invest going forward. But you could cut back. And that's, that's an alternative I think a lot of people are going to face. But my friend's mom can't. So with all of that being said, I wanted to, to, uh, to go over some numbers here and show you just what it looks like when you are investing uh, as a 20 year old versus what you what you have to invest when you are 30 and older. So 
on the screen right now, I'm gonna show screenshots from this TikTok video that I made, but I'm also looking at my computer because I've got them over here. If you're 20 and you've got 40 years to invest, so your goal is I'm gonna retire when I hit 60, you're gonna put in $200 a month into an S&P 500 index fund. Historically, on average, they return around 10.5% per year. Obviously, that's why you say historically and on average because not every year. Some years it's gonna go down, some years it's gonna be flat, some years it's gonna go way up, way more than 10.5%, and then you get an average. And that average, since its inception in the 1950s, is 10.5%. So if you put in $200 a month, every month for 40 years, at the end, you're gonna have 1.4 million, almost $1.5 million. That's a lot. And then at that point, you start drawing down, taking out money to live off, selling and taking you know out of your Roth IRA or whatever, taking out these funds to cover your expenses. Now let's say that you are 30 and you're just starting to invest, right? So you're 30 years old and you wanna retire when you are 60, which means you're looking at that same, uh, that same time frame of investing. I wanna retire when I'm 60, but you're 30. So now instead of having 40 years like a 20 year old, you've got only 30 years. The difference that just 10 years can make in your portfolio is astonishing. So you're gonna, you've got 30 years, your goal is to have you know enough to retire off of, and you're only putting in $200, the same as the 20 year old, that 10 year difference, like leaving out those first 10 years, pulls you in around $507,000. So 10 years makes a huge difference. So now that means if you want that 40 year 1.4 million, you won't be able to retire until you're 70 now. That's perspective. So if you don't, if you still want to retire when you're 60, you're not going to be able to. You're only going to have half a million and the 20 year old is going to be sitting on 1.4, maybe even more. So the problem is, as you can see, you need to start investing more and more and more as you get older so you can have that money. So now the last scenario is you're still 30. You still want to retire when you're 60, which means your goal is around $1.4 million to get close to that $1.4 million. You'll have to put in $550 a month compared to the 20 year old who's only putting in 200 because they have more time on their side. You have less time, so you need to put in more. And because you have less time, you also have less time for the markets to do the thing. Not really though, we're not talking about, I wanna retire in three years and I have nothing, like my friend's mom. She won't be able to retire because she's gonna have to put in basically a million dollars in an index fund. Uh, and a, a, in a volatile market at her age, you're kind of shit out of luck. The problem also with this scenario of starting later is that when you start later, you have to put in more. So $550, $200 is attainable, potentially, hopefully. If it's not, then that's a different conversation. But you might not in your 30s have $550 a month dedicated to just throw into an index fund and not worry about for the next 30 years. You might have a wedding. You might have babies, you might have pets, you might have a mortgage or rent, you might have children who require clothes and larger cars to accommodate and bigger vacations and birthdays and, and, and all these things add up and you might not have that 550, which means you're not able to potentially retire. That's why it's so important to invest when you were young, as much as you can, as early as you can, just dump it in. And then we can talk later about different investments and other kinds of investments. But when you are young and you're just starting out, just get that solid foundation. If you're 20 and you're watching this and you're putting your stuff into an index fund, you might find out later on that you want to invest in a real estate investment trust. You might find out over time that you want to invest in like a covered call ETF that produces monthly income, um, but is a little bit more volatile. Don't worry about those things yet. You're new, you're young, just get the, get the foundation and put as much as you can into that as often as you can. And who knows, you might even be able to retire a little earlier. That would be the goal, right? We all wanna retire a little earlier. If you thought this video was helpful, hit the subscribe, hit the follow, hit the bells, hit all the things, you know what to do. Thanks for watching and have a good day.